Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Spares Box. Many of you guys will probably already recognize this Fox Body Mustang. We built this in collaboration with the Skid Factory. Um, we worked on this concept uh, both here and in America. So originally we flew down to uh, MPW in Victoria and those guys let us basically use uh, Jason Way from Tough Mounts. He's also got a Fox Body with a barrel in it. And, and they basically let us use that vehicle as a template to mock up all of our cooling system, our intake, our cooler piping, and all of our exhaust and turbo setup. So that allowed us to actually basically be a whole week in front when we got to America. Uh, we, we air freighted the engine. Hughes Performance actually shipped us the transmission directly from Arizona to, North, to South Carolina where we were working at Charleston Performance Solutions. Uh, and then we were getting all this done, got it running in-house. Our tuning fork helped us get it running. Unfortunately, we had an oil pump failure um, driving between South Carolina and North Carolina on the way to Drag Week. So long story short, uh, Robbie Abbott helped us uh, basically cobble two engines together because the Cresta engine actually also dropped the valve. So we basically had the good bottom end from the Cresta and the good top end from the Mustang original engine. And that allowed us to build those two engines together. Um, HED, Harold Engine and Dyno were kind enough to, kind enough to open the doors um, after hours and let us pull the engine out, repair it, use whatever we wanted in that shop. And basically what you see here is, is as we ran the car at Drag Week, It still has the Drag Week engine in it, um, but today what we're gonna do is go right through the car and basically prep it to race again. Um, we're pretty much gonna cover all sorts of stuff today like flushing the fuel system, cleaning injectors, um, servicing the engine, servicing the transmission, and why that's important after a vehicle sat to do those things. So um, obviously with what's going on in the world right now, we've had a lot of people parking up their track cars, whether it be circuit, drift, or, uh, or drag strip or rally cars even. Um, and unfortunately, those cars sitting will actually be causing damage if they haven't been uh, maintained periodically while they've been sitting. So what we're gonna do today is cover um, the best methods in my opinion to basically prep the vehicle and get it back ready for track action. While the engine's cold, I've actually dropped uh, all the, the fluid from the cooling system. We don't run a glycol based coolant in any of our drag cars, we actually run um, effectively just a corrosion inhibitor so that we don't get heaps of rust scale and stuff. Being that the barriers are all a cast iron block, if you don't have some sort of treatment in there, um, you're pretty much guaranteed you're gonna have rust or dirty water in the system. Um, with that in mind, we're still gonna flush this cooling system. So we do have a cooling system flush that we're gonna add to some just um, tap water. We're gonna run that for about 10 or 15 minutes then we're gonna drop that out. Um, as a byproduct of that, it's gonna heat the engine up. So wh while the engine's warm, we're also gonna drain the engine oil. Um, engine oil in an E85 engine will always have a lot of uh, a higher moisture content than if you're running a 98 or a um, like a standard conventional petrol style engine. So leaving that to sit is definitely not going to do the engine any good. We did put fresh oil in this uh, before we put it into, a, into storage in America. Um, we were actually planning to go back to the States this year, run this car at Drag Week. Um, unfortunately, we've had coronavirus and all sorts of stuff go on that's meant that we couldn't go back to America. Um, Drag Week was actually also cancelled this year, so um, regardless, we wouldn't have been able to run that event. Um, the guys at Rocky Mountain Race Week did run uh, Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0 instead of Drag Week, so local Americans still got to be able to do that sort of same events. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, we're basically going to drop those two things out um, while it's warm, and then we'll move on to the next thing, which will be our transmission flush, and then we'll also be ripping out the injectors most likely at the same time so we can chuck those in our injector bench and, and at least get some, some figures before we go cleaning them and um, so we can make a bit more of a more informed decision. We do have a second set of injectors. We run a spare set of injectors for this and the Cresta. Um, they're both different injectors now. So we run a like a Bosch style injector in this and then the, the Cresta runs the, the Siemens Decker 2400. So we'll uh, drop this, we'll fill the cooling system back up with some flush and water. Then we'll run it for 10 or 15 minutes, get it warm 
and then we'll drop the coolant and the engine all out of it at the same time. We've now got our engine up to operating temperature. Uh, one thing that is worth mentioning, I actually removed the hose clamp from the bottom hose when I drained the radiator previously. I didn't put it back on because the cooling system's not under pressure. Uh, we've just done one fan cycle, so it's got right up to sort of 90 degrees. Um, it's, having a, it's had a good heat cycle and a good flush, so now we're just gonna knock this bottom hose off and all of our uh, cooling system flush and water's gonna come out of it. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do before we refill it with uh, clean uh, corrosion inhibitor is actually wash out the overflow tank because there's a little bit of sort of rusty looking gunk in there so we'll give that a good flush out before we go and uh, refill our system. just refilled the cooling system now with our corrosion inhibitor and water. Um, I'm not going to start it up now. Typically when you've got it in this configuration you pretty much fire it up and leave it to bleed itself. However we're about to drop the engine oil out of it. So what I've done is overfilled the, the good old funnel bucket and that's actually going to allow air to bleed out uh, without the engine running. Because we don't run a thermostat in either this or the Cresta, um, basically that's going to mean that it will bleed itself uh, without, have it, without having to actually open the thermostat and get that up to temperature. So what we're going to do is just let that sort of do its thing and then once we've done the oil change and, and the transmission service we'll um, probably kick it in the guts and we'll uh, check all of our fluid levels at the same time and set them all and get them all happy. Um, then once we've done that we'll uh, whip out our fuel injectors and we'll flush out our fuel system. ethanol in it. I mean, I'm no magical oilologist, but it doesn't smell like it's overloaded with E85. It's fairly dark too, which means we've also, this engine we run on petrol for all the transit and commute stuff, and then E85 at the track. Um, the Crest is the same, so generally if you're running this purely on E85, the oil is going to be a lot more of a sort of caramelly, milky kind of colour, um, but when you kind of introduce petrol into the oil system effectively it, it makes the oil go black because there's more carbon burn off um, but this this oil looks pretty good like I said we did change it sort of late late in the piece before it went into storage however um, with this sitting in it for a while it will turn really acidic and that acid can attack things like um, your main bearings and your potentially even your crank surface or your cam surfaces so it is um, pretty cru crucial to replace this oil before you go racing the car at the track um, much the same with the transmission. It's, it's, it's less of a problem with transmissions, but you can find that the acidity levels go up and then the, the acid in that, in that oil can um, damage clutches or all sorts of stuff. So for, those, for that reason, we're going to be changing the fluids today. Um, I mean, it's good practice as well and oil's cheap. The transmission of the engine in this is uh, fairly, fairly expensive in comparison to fluid changes. So changing the oil just is good uh, insurance. The last time you guys would have seen this car, it would have had only the side pipe. Uh, since it's come back to Australia, I've been pretty busy making a full three inch exhaust under the vehicle. 
So we're going to run a primary uh, three inch exhaust on the car now, which will actually shut it up heaps. This is now quieter than the Cresta. Um, but and at the track, we've now got a, a four inch diverter valve in the existing side pipe. So when we're at the track, we can open that up. Uh, because basically if we're going to go back to this three inch, it's probably not going to flow enough gas to make the power that we need. So leaving the side pipe and being able to open that up at the track is going to be a massive advantage. Uh, but we've gone with stainless all the way through. Um, it's kind of okay welded, I guess. I welded it, so it's not amazing. Um, but we've got a couple of V-bands on it. We've got a V-band at the top of the dump pipe. Then we've got one at the, basically the back of the dump pipe. And then we've got a flex straight after that. Then we've got another V-band uh, before the rear muffler. Um, the rear muffler has actually been recycled. It was the original uh, Fujitsubo stainless rear muffler that came with the Stagia. So it's cool to be able to sort of put that on something else and keep it going. Uh, one thing worth mentioning too, the dump pipe is actually hard mounted to the transmission because this is all moving together. And then obviously we've now got our V-band and our flex. Uh, then after, at, from this point on, the exhaust is mounted via rubber. Um, they're actually genuine Subaru hangers. We use uh, genuine hangers, the, the rubber part of the hanger, just because the material quality is heats better than most of the aftermarket ones you can find. Um, these things go for 20 plus years, whereas a lot of the, OE, the, the aftermarket ones start to rot after a couple of years. So for a little bit more spend, you actually get a much better hanger. Um, and these, these things just go forever. A good little tip when you're draining your transmission pan, uh, it's not foolproof. However, I normally drain the transmission into a, uh, like a, a fixed oil drain pan purely so I can see how much oil comes out. So when I'm refilling it, I've got a rough idea how much to put back in. Um, obviously, you always want to check your level correctly on your dipstick, but at least it gives you a ballpark of how much oil to put back into the transmission. We're only going to drop the pan. We're not actually going to do a full flush on this because I know the oil is fairly good. However, I just want to give it a bit of a freshen up to um, sort of keep it, keep it happy and keep it going. We've got our transmission fluid in the pan. Um, the indicator on the tray shows it's just above five litres. So basically going to start at five litres and start it up, get it warm, make sure it's happy, um, then just dip it and check it. But around that should be a pretty good start. So we're just going to dump this into the old uh, waste oil drum. Um, it's, it's served its purpose, but we'll uh, keep on trucking. We're pretty much finished with the front of the car now, so we've uh, shifted focus to the back of the car. We're going to drain our fuel cell of the old E85. Um, remarkably, the car actually runs really well on the current fuel. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to go trying to make any um, pulls on the dyno or passes down the track on that old fuel. However, it seems to be managing it okay. So what we're going to do is drain the tank, then we're going to put about two or three litres of fresh fuel in it, then we're going to drain it again. Then once that's done, we're going to um, basically fill it up as much as we can with fresh A85. Then when we get to the track at Willowbank, there's actually an A85 servo pretty much next door. So we'll brim the tank with fresh fuel and then we'll fill up some jerrys with fresh fuel as well. Um, the goal is to basically keep this thing on the A85 all weekend because there's pretty much E85 availability at the whole drag challenge weekend route. Um, we're probably gonna play the same game with the Cresta. However, driving it um, from here in New South Wales to Queensland, we're gonna have to run it on uh, 98 because there's not quite enough stations up the coast to be able to get it onto E85 the whole way. Um, equally, we get better range on 98 anyway, so um, it'll just be a cheaper fuel bill and it'll mean less fuel stops. So uh, both of those things are wins in my book. So we'll uh, 
basically drain this tank. Um, we're also going to pull the fuel filter out and then pull it apart. Um, it is a billet uh, fuel filter that we can actually disassemble and, and inspect it. So we can have a look and see if there's any funky stuff going on or any floaties in there. Um, it's a stainless element as well, so we can wash that out and reuse it. We don't have to actually replace it. So we'll uh, pump the tank out, then put some fresh fuel in and we'll remove that filter. We pumped our fuel cell out. We've got about uh, 35 litres of E85 out of it. Um, it still smells fine. There's nothing sort of weird. There's no mould or scale or anything on the bottom of the tank. I had a good look inside there as well. It all looks pretty good. Put about five litres of fresh E85 in the tank now. So what we're gonna do is run it for sort of four or five minutes, let it circulate. Then what we're gonna do is pump that out again and then fill the rest of the tank with the fresh E85 that we have. Uh, and then that's basically gonna have the fuel system clean um, after we do that, we're going to pull the filter out and inspect and clean that as well. Uh, then finally, we're going to pull the injectors out and put them on our test bench, um, give them a flow test and then run them through a good clean cycle, then flow test them again. Regardless of what the results are, we're going to clean them and flow test them twice um, just to make sure everything's happy. And then we'll fit them back in and that'll be pretty much us done for the day. Keep up. Standard. Should probably get an airlock because it was like rising pretty quick. Another thing that's worth mentioning is uh, making sure that you're on top of your catch can or your breather system servicing, uh, especially E85 cars. If they've been in storage and you've got a habit of kind of going out and starting it and letting it warm up for 10 minutes, thinking you're doing the right thing, 99% of the time you are. However, you're going to get tons of condensation building up in your catch can. And if you're not onto that, you'll actually end up filling the system up and you'll get to a point where the can and the lines are full and you'll just start filling the sump with water. Uh, so if you are going to periodically go and start your race car or your, your street track car or whatever, however you want to call it. Um, make sure you're always cleaning and draining your catch can. Uh, this particular can is a nice little setup because it's, it's got a breather in the top, but it still looks like a fairly sealed and compact unit. Um, the one downside to the place we've installed this one is you can't get to the drain while it's in the car. Um, the inverse of that is it takes two minutes to pull it out and just drain it and clean it. So um, it's not a bad thing. But yeah, definitely keep in mind to clean your catch cans out if, if your car's in storage. We're just giving these injectors an initial flow test. Um, I'm not convinced that this rail actually distributes the fuel evenly because I always see the centre two injectors uh, in this bench always read high, no matter how I sort of set it up. If I power one injector individually or if I try and run all six, um, bigger injectors specifically, I only run one at a time because these things actually consume more fuel than the pump inside this bench can put out. So I always flow test one at a time. Um, in saying that, even even only running one at a time, I don't think that the fuel distribution is even, uh, or the test fluid distribution, I should say, is even. Um, however, 
if I move these injectors around, I still get that same pattern in the, um, in the flow, but I don't want to muck them up because they're currently one to six and I want to put them back in the car one to six because if there's any um, individual cylinder trims that have gone in, in in the ECU, we don't want to sort of upset that or have to muck around changing the tune. So yeah, these have come out one to six and I'll go back in one to six. So we'll uh, whip these out now and put them in the sonic bath, give them a good clean. Um, I'm actually really surprised with how well they've performed given that they've sat for quite a while with the 85 in them. In saying that, these are stainless injectors, so they shouldn't really have a problem with the 85, but it's still to be um, a bit surprising that they've come out the way they have, and it's always better to err on the side of caution when it comes to fuel system, because one faulty injector is gonna burn that thing to the ground in 10 seconds, like that's game over pretty much. So we'll uh, whack them in the sonic bath, and while we're doing that, we'll actually pull the fuel filter out, because the, the sonic cleaning takes about 15 minutes. So we'll uh, whip these out and put them in the bath and we'll uh, throw them back in the car. We'll change the O-rings too. Some of these O-rings aren't the best, so we'll uh, put some fresh O-rings on. Well, I'll drop these nuts again, because it always happens.
Got a heap done today on the uh, good old Mustang. We're pretty much finished with this now. It's ready to go to Drag Challenge in Queensland. Um, we're doing all we can to get up there. As it stands right now, we're outside of the exclusion zone. I do have a border pass, but we're still at least a week away from going up. So between now and then anything could change. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're doing our best to get up there. Um, this thing's pretty much sorted now. Uh, it's gonna go for a wheel um, right now and we'll uh, pretty much pack it up. Uh, anyone using Spurs Box, please remember BCW5 on checkout. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.